Well, I took up the cross You left for me Took up the cross mm, That set me free From trouble time The victory Took up the cross That set me free So we're doing this new thing. The elders, we're, we're preaching from a book of the Bible, and we're each taking a different chapter. Um, and so we're in the, the first book that we've ever done this um, as a group of elders. Um, we're in Colossians. And I, I, I want to say I got excited and uh, when we decided to do this, and I asked if I could do chapter 2, and they said, sure. So I went to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I was reading it. I'm going, this is awesome. This is going to be a great sermon. And then then Tom said, "Uh, Dave, we're doing Colossians, not Corinthians. (laughs) So someday at a later date. (laughs) That's right, I got to. I got a sermon in the can just waiting for you guys. <laughs> so, uh, so this is, this is chapter 2 of Colossians, except that, you know, in the Bible, they, when they wrote the scriptures out, they didn't write chapter and verse. They just kept on writing. They didn't use a whole lot of grammar. I don't know if they used periods at the end of sentences. So just went out there. So I'm going to take a little uh, license and back up a little bit. Um, Colin said that Tom finished badly last, last week. <laughs> so I felt it was my duty to correct all that. No, I, <laughs> I could do chapter one. It would probably have nothing to do with anything Tom said because the Bible's that deep. It, means something totally different to me than it did to Tom. And so we can do that. So I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, Just a little background. Paul wrote this as a letter. He was writing to uh, this new Christian church in Colossae. We're having some issues getting started. And we don't know much about that. Um, because we don't ever have issues here at First Christian Church. (laughs) The main passage that Paul was proclaiming is that only through Jesus can we close the gap that exists between God and man. You know, it it happened when uh, Adam and Eve were in the garden and then they sinned against God. They ate some fruit that they weren't supposed to, right? We know that story. And uh, they got kicked out, right? But it wasn't so much that they were kicked out of the garden. It was that the relationship that they'd have with God in the garden was severed. Um, and where they used to walk around with God and talk to him and, and uh, um, be with him in the evenings, that stopped. And... Uh, until Jesus Christ came and was crucified and resurrected and gave us a chance at a new deal that he was going to put together with us, a new covenant, there's been this terrible separation. A few people in the Old Testament um, had relationships with, with Jesus and we get to read about those. See you, kids. Bye. Come back, Mom. So, uh, so Jesus came down to earth to rectify this separation. 
and uh, there was a picture of it in the Holy of Holies in the temple. There was a place where one priest would go once a year, once a year, and at his own peril. They used to tie a rope around his ankle just in case he got killed, they could drag him out. Okay? Now, God didn't really live in the Holy of Holies. But God wanted to create this picture that we could see that we can't go and commune with God in that particular point in time. But Jesus changed all that. And uh, so Paul's trying to let us know that Jesus is the center of our faith. He's the center of everything that's important. So let's uh, let's look at, if you don't mind, chapter one, verse twenty-five through twenty-nine. That's the very end of the chapter. It says God has given me. This is Paul speaking. God has given me the responsibility of serving His church by proclaiming His entire message to you. This message was kept secret. For centuries and generations past. Okay, Maurice? Okay, all right, no problem. But now it has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too, also. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. Life's tough, isn't it? So often we struggle through our daily daily life. It's 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 difficult. Getting by, but just barely sometimes. If things get too tough, if things get really hard, and Dave doesn't think he can make it through this situation, then I look up to heaven and say, Jesus, help me. Jesus isn't up there. He's here. And he was sitting there politely while we were doing all that struggling. just waiting for us to call on him. It's interesting. Sometimes it's difficult to understand that in the Old Testament, there was the promise of a Messiah and how that Messiah was going to present himself, what he was going to do, was a little fuzzy. It was a little hard to understand. And so many people got it wrong. They thought that he was going to be a military leader, that he was going to come. He was going to free the uh, Jews from the Roman tyranny. Um, they were just guessing. They didn't guess very well, I guess. So, God could have revealed exactly what the Messiah was. Oh, wait, I guess, I guess he did, pretty much. <laughs> People love prophets, don't they? They love prophets, right, right Anna? And uh, not only did they not listen to him, but they usually killed him. It's one way to shut somebody up, isn't it? Not a very nice way. So, 
I don't exactly know what Paul was saying that this was all kept secret. But it was, their eyes were covered and they weren't able to see the truth of what was being said. That ever happened to you? Collins, what do you always say? I, I, yeah, I may be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. That's something to live by there. <laughs> or <laughs> to, avoid, <laughs> to avoid. Christ lives in you. Now, in the upper room, he talked about how he was going to give the gift of the Holy Spirit and he was come and live between us. Now, the Holy Spirit's been around this world since the beginning of time. Maybe a little before. And uh, the Holy Spirit's been in the world and been a part and parcel of all the things that have happened in this world. And the Holy Spirit has come upon men um, and influenced them by the things that were said, that were done, that were happening. You know, if you look at Gideon, it's always a good example of somebody who the Spirit of God had came upon Gideon and uh, asked him to do a bunch of fighting, but he wasn't really that kind of a guy. He was more of a... a okay, all right, okay. I'll go with that. He was a lover, not a, not a fighter. Um, so, the, the Holy Spirit influenced him and led him through a series of events to where he got a small fighting force. He had a bigger one, and the Holy Spirit led him to do something that just wasn't in him to do on his own. He didn't have the power to do that. But God has been here since the beginning. And he's been talking to man through other people, through dreams, through visions. Guys are good at not hearing what's being said. Really good at that. Talent. Still got that talent. So look, uh, we always say God's love, right? We tend to think of love as we understand it. How can how can we do otherwise? But God's love has no qualifications. So the love is unconditional. It doesn't make a difference. What you did yesterday, God's going to love you. You may not love yourself. Um, and there may be not too many people. There may be few people out there that love you. Um, because of the stuff you're doing. But God loves you. And sometimes we wonder about that. We try to do stuff. You know, we work really hard, trim our hair. I'm trying to look as nice as Quam today, so I got a suit on. It's my, my goal. He's setting the standard. But... Um, um, you know, we might try to fix things up in our life. We might want to stop doing stuff, you know, not smoking cigarettes, not drinking booze, um, not chasing women around. I've always found that women can run a lot faster than me, so it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, that's, yeah. So look, uh, 
Do you wonder why God loves you? Do you wonder? How's that possible? God loves you. Really? Not that much lovable in Dave. Ask Bobby, she'll tell you. She has to dig real hard. She found it. She found that little lovable nugget. So she's staying with me. So Paul reveals the secret. He said that God sees Christ in you, his beloved son, when he looks at you, if you're a believer in Christ, if you've accepted Jesus into your life, then when God looks at you, Maurice, he sees Jesus. He sees his son. That's a, that's a gift that's hard to understand. Um... I don't know. Don't know what to say. That Christ is living in me, that's there's gonna be some rough times. <laughs> Jesus gotta really love me sometimes, because otherwise he'd be going, gotta get out of here. <laughs> Can't take this. Excuse me. Yeah, David is uh being his old self again. So Paul writes further, he says, So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God, perfecting their relationship to Christ. That's why I work and struggle so hard depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. Paul wasn't a great speaker. There's a few places in the Old Testament that kind of point to that, and the New Testament, I mean. And uh, that wasn't, he wasn't eloquent. He was effective. He served God's purpose, and he did it well. He was educated in... I'll call it a universities, whatever was going on back then in the old old days. But uh, he was an educated man. He wasn't one of those other fishermen that Jesus called into ministry to be his disciple. Um, but I don't think he relied on that education a whole lot. I think he relied on God-given wisdom. Um, and I don't think it was an exclusive gift to Paul. I think that we all have access to that. That's why I can read Colossians and go back to the final verse in chapter 1 and feel that I can preach it, even though Tom has preached it already. And it doesn't really make any overlap. The writings of the Bible are God-given wisdom. It's deep stuff. Who have you told about Jesus lately? There's a lot of people out there that are going to hell. There's a lot of people out there who think they got it all worked out, think they got it all figured out, think that they're politically correct, which I don't think is very correct these days. But anyway, they're going to find out and not have a chance to change their mind. But you could have made a difference. Paul is saying... You need to talk to people. We need to be working toward helping people protect perfect their faith. 
helping people to understand and invite Jesus to live within us. Got to spend some time learning who he is. You don't want some stranger living in there. It's all written down. All the things that Jesus thinks you need to know about him are in the word of God. So you can study 1 Corinthians or Colossians. It doesn't matter. You know who it's about? It's about Jesus. I could get up and I could preach about 1 Corinthians and I could go through that book and next week, Jimmy could get up here and preach the third chapter of Colossians and it would be fine. In fact, next week if you come here, probably they're going to be preaching about Jesus. And if you're out of town for a while and you come back in three four months, if you come back next year, we're going to be preaching about Jesus. Chapter 2. Ready to start preaching. <laughs> I want you to know, and this is Paul speaking again, I want you to know how much I have agonized for you and for the church at Laodicea and for many other believers who have never met me personally. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I'm telling you this so no one will be deceived with well-crafted arguments. For though I am Far away from you, my heart is with you, and I rejoice that you are living as you should, and that your faith is Christ is strong, in Christ is strong. So what he's basically saying is, you might have people get up here on this, and they may talk about cool stuff. They might talk about your finances. They might talk about new cars. I don't know. It's about Jesus Christ, okay? So if anybody is up here talking about other than Jesus, they're basically wasting your time, okay? It's what you need to know about, and you need to be telling your friends. we got a few open seats. So you can invite somebody to the next church service and I guarantee you there will be room. We got a balcony. So if everybody invites two or three friends, I still got room. If I have to, I'll hook up Fellowship Hall with the sermon and we'll let them sit down there. You might be the only person in that person's life who knows the secret about Jesus Christ. Now there's a lot working against you. Satan has been after this for a long time and he works in people's lives through media, through written word, through charismatic speakers, people like me that are charismatic. I'm not very charismatic. But uh, amen for that, huh? Yeah. So this is a new church. And there's some people there that are coming up with their own gospel message. And it might sound great, but the truth is, Paul's telling, hey, it's about Jesus, the whole gospel is 
Jesus died for your sins. He was resurrected on the third day. And if you have faith in him and repent and be baptized, that you are going to heaven 100%. And I have no doubt that you're going to heaven. Do you? Amen. No, no doubt. So Paul goes on and says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. You know, uh, there's no gospel that says that you're going to have a wonderful, problem-free life, and that you're going to be rich, and everybody's going to love you. Kind of talks about the opposite for a lot. But he's talking about allowing Christ to root himself in our life, that we will have that joy, we will have the peace that the creator of the universe is in control of our lives. And look, he's probably got a better perspective on what's going on in our life than we do. We're, we're walking around with tunnel vision, right? This is what we can see. God can see everything going on. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ who is the head over every ruler and authority. I, I, I wrote a bunch of stuff down here, but that was pretty clear. We have to guard ourselves because there's people out there that are going to tell you what you want to hear. They make the words sound great. They're renting rooms, filling auditoriums. There's... People that are going to tell you how to do all kinds of stuff. There's no time for that. There's only time for Jesus Christ. I know Tom was, we were in retreat Friday, and he was saying, I don't have enough time to spend with God the way I would like. And we all have to work for a living. I, I'm fortunate I work here for a living doesn't mean my mind's always on Jesus Christ. But I, it, there's nothing impeding my ability to do that, except stuff breaks all the time here. Um, I feel for Tom. I do. It'd be nice if you could just wake up in the morning and go out, sit in a field, and contemplate Jesus Christ all day. I know you'd love to do that. But as important as other things in our life are, that is the thing that is important. So we always have to watch. Bobby used to complain that I watched too much news. So, so I've cut that way back. I don't watch too much news. 
I always disagreed with them, at least half the time. The weather, I was okay with. Other stuff, you know, get a little difficult. So, but look, you have been given access to the fullness of God. Every day, we can have confidence in our ability because Christ is in us. We can do the things, accomplish all that is set before us. Jesus has said in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it is this truth that he says will set us free. Freedom in Christ requires a knowledge of Christ. So week after week, you come to church here and you got to hear about Jesus. Because we care. And week after week, your knowledge and understanding of our God, our Lord and Savior, the man who died on the cross to give us access to heaven, is revealed through ordinary guys who are influenced when they study the Bible in order to give you guys a word on a Sunday morning. We're not exceptional people. I'm pretty great, but the rest of the guys are. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's just at this time. I can get up here and stand before you and speak with authority today. Tomorrow, you know, Nidia came in the other day and says, hey, can you, can you empty the water in the, uh, what do they call that, the humidif dehumidifier in, the, in one of the offices? I said, sure. That's my job. My job is not standing up here and speaking to you guys. Maybe you figure that out because I'm not very professional at it. But the truth is that any of you can come up here and stand and talk about Jesus because he's in you. Jesus is in you.